Here we go. I'm just going to pick up right where we left off with, I'm going to go to developer here. Here's our calculator. All right. I'm going to, when I want to relaunch it, I could just uh, launch and get the splash screen here um, and then click on this to open it. And here it is. And uh, before, if you remember where we were, we only had a pie button and then uh, the keypad, and that was great. Um, so now we want to add more buttons. That's what we're going to do. We're going to add more operations and more sophisticated operations like multiply and things like that. Uh, before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about a feature in Swift that can really make your code read a lot better. You notice here that we have this type conversion, string and pi, right? Where this is the, when the pi button is pressed, we have to convert pi, which is a double, to a string. Well, if I think ahead about all the operations I'm going to want to add to my calculator, they're all doubles. Everything is doubles, not strings. Okay? So am I really going to have, for all these operations, all kinds of converting back and forth between strings and doubles as I try to put the result into the display or get the number out of the display? That is going to end up being really tedious. Okay? And it's going to make my code kind of a mess, lots of type conversions back and forth. Wouldn't it be cool if I had a var called display value, which was a double? And this var automatically tracked what was in that display. In other words, if I ever got the value of this, it would be the value in the display as a double. And if I ever set the value of this, it would set the display. Wouldn't that be cool? Right? That would make all the rest of my code a lot easier because I'd be all in double land and not having to be doing this string conversion. And the answer is we can absolutely do that kind of var, a var that tracks something else. Okay, this var, our user is in the middle of typing, is just stored. That true false value is stored somewhere with this object. Um, this one, instead of being stored, it's going to be calculated. Okay? And we call this a computed property. And we do it just by putting curly braces after it. Okay? And inside these curly braces, we're going to put some code to calculate the value of this property, both when we get it okay, and when we set it. So we have this get and set um, keywords here. And inside here, we just put code to get the value of display value. And set is the code that gets executed when someone tries to set the value of this var. Okay? Super simple. So What's the implementation of this? Really easy. When someone tries to get the display value, I'm just going to return the display's text, okay, unwrapped. But of course, this is a string, right? Okay? And this is supposed to be returning a double. So I need to convert this string to a double. So I'm going to say double like that. Okay? Now, this is still not going to work, okay? Why is that? Let's look at our error. It says the value of optional double is not unwrapped. Look, it's trying to unwrap this. Okay, that's really weird. See, it's putting an exclamation point at the end of this double. I didn't have to do that down here. When I converted from this double to a string, I didn't unwrap it. Why is this? I'm trying to create a double here using this string. Why do you think this is returning an optional double instead of a double? Correct. It might not be convertible, right? If I press hello in there as the string, double of hello, I don't know. Okay. Now, again, it could return zero or something else, but really it wants to say, I don't know. I can't do it. And the best way to do that is with an optional. So some constructors, okay, some of these initializers for various classes can return optional versions of the thing in, in, in the case where they can't necessarily create one for you. Okay. So that's really kind of awesome. So let's go ahead and unwrap that. Okay. Now, this would, again, this would crash if we ever put hello in here. It's going to crash. So we're kind of designing our code, assuming this is always going to have a number. How about setting it? Okay. Here we want to set the display's text equal to what the person is setting the display value to. Okay. When someone sets the display value, they're going to say in their code, display value equals 5. Right? So how do I get the 5? in here, in this set? And the answer is there's a special keyword called new value. Okay? This new value is going to be the double that somebody set. Okay? Display value equals something. Now, I want to put that in display text, but of course this, what type is this right here? It's a double, right? Because they said display value equals something, and it's a double. And this has got to be a string, so I've got to convert this to a string, just like I did below that. Okay? can always convert a double to a string, so there's no optional uh, stuff going on. And that's it. Okay? I've now invented a new property uh, that is calculated. 
And every time I ask for its value, I'm going to get what's in the display as a double. And every time I set it, it's going to set the display. Pretty cool, huh? And it makes our code like down here a lot better. Instead of having this go down here, we're just going to say display value equals pi. Okay? We don't need to do this type conversion and reference display text. Okay? Everyone understand that? And this is going to make it a lot easier to add new things. Let's add another property or a, another um, operation here. I'm going to add square root. Okay, so let's go here and do square root. The square root symbol I'm going to get from the edit. If you go into edit menu of most Mac apps, you'll see this emoji and symbols thing at the bottom. It brings up this uh, window, or you can have a lot of emoji, but you can also have math symbols. And uh, down here, here's square root. This is the square root symbol, okay? So I'm going to put the square root symbol on this button root, okay? And um, then it's already wired up. If I hold over here, you can see it's hooked up because I copy and pasted the pi button. Uh, we can see it's okay here because I didn't copy and paste a digit button. If I right click on it, we can see that it's only going to send perform operation. All right, so that's all good. And all I need to do here is say if the mathematical symbol equals uh, that square root thing, then the display value equals the square root of the display value. Okay? So you can see that this code is really nice. If I didn't have that, I would have had to get the display text, convert it to a double, do the square root, convert it back to a string, put it back in display text. See how that would have been a mess? Okay? And this is only just the very first one I added. Um, when we, if we add a whole bunch more, we're gonna, it's going to be even more and more leverage to have this thing. But mostly I'm showing you this because I want you to see what computed properties look like. We use them all the time in Swift. Um, we're going to use them yet again in this demo. And you should get comfortable with the fact that not all your properties are stored. Some of them might be computed like this. All right. 